Let's take a look at this question now, Sue and Tom. Um, it's a partnership question that was in the 2021 um, paper, the AQA 7127-1. Um, so Sue and Tom have been in partnership for many years. Their financial year ends on the 31st of January. Um, and on the 1st of September 2020, Usma um, is coming into the partnership. And they've given us some information here. They've got deeds of partnership. That means there is a partnership agreement, so we don't have to worry about the, the Partnership Act of 1890. Um, so we've got some information about before the change and after the change. So Sue and Tom were in partnership originally. Um, they were having 6% interest on their capital. Tom was receiving an annual salary, 24,600, and they were sharing their profits and losses equally. After Usma's joined the partnership, the interest on capital is going down to 4%. Um, Tom is still getting his annual salary. Remember, this is an annual salary. It's not 24,600 for each of the periods before and after the, uh, the change in the partnership. Um, and then going forward, the three of them are going to share their profits 35, 40, 25 each. We've got some additional information. Um, so the balance on the capital account, Sue had um, 45,000. And Tom had 84,000. So 1st of February 2020, the start of the financial year. Um, on the 1st of September, Sue has paid additional capital into the account, um, 25,500. Usma's brought 21,000 in also on the 1st of September when she joined. Um, Goodwill's been agreed a valuation of 54,000. So remember that with Goodwill, we need to credit the old partners, so the ones that were there originally, um, to their capital accounts in their profit sharing ratio. And then we need to charge or debit the new partners, that capital account, so all three of them, partners going forwards, um, we need to debit them with 54,000 in the new profit sharing ratio. Um, profit for the year was 100,500 and luckily that, that accrues evenly throughout the year. So just need to split that between the, um, the seven months up until Usma joined, because she joined on the 1st of September. So if we count from the 1st of February through to the uh, 31st of August, that's a seven month period. And then September, October, November, December, January, a five month period from when Usma joined to the year end of the 31st of January. Um, and then we've got drawings, 26,000, 35,000 and 10,000 respectively. Um, and what we're asked to do, 14.1 is to prepare the appropriation account for 14 marks. Um, and it says there clearly show all the relevant figures for the seven months before Usma joined and the five months after. Um, so clearly the examiner is, uh, is keen to make sure that people apply the right split there. Um, then we've got 14.2 for another six marks. So remember this is in section B, so we've got 14 marks from computations and six marks from writing. Um, and this one's asking you about um, the differences really between capital and current accounts. So it says there that on joining the partnership, Usma noticed that Sue and Tom maintain separate capital and current accounts. And Usma wants to change that so that each partner has a combined capital and current account. And you've got to assess whether the partnership should make this change. So I'm now going to switch over onto my little camera and work through um, the question for you. So um, step by step. So as we've already seen, the first part of this is to prepare an appropriation account. So I've already made a start on um, drawing that up. So the first thing to do with this, and I think the examiner has got fed up with the students not being able to count on their fingers either, um, but they've, they've clearly shown us this, they clearly show the relevant figures for the seven months before Usma joined. So that's the period from the 1st of February to the 31st of um, August, 2020, and the five months after. So you can't really go wrong as long as you've read that question carefully. But whenever I ask students to you know, work out what the split is. Is it two months, periods of six months? Is it seven and a five and eight and a four? There's always a few people in the class that seem to get it wrong, but just don't be afraid to use your fingers um, to count the months. So that's the first thing to note. So what we're going to do then is start obviously with the profit for the year. So we need to pop that in. Um, and then that needs to be split seven twelfths and five twelfths. So if we look here, the profit for the year was, let me just try and find it here, 100,000. Um, so times 7 twelfths, £100,500 is going to give us 58,625. Um, and then times 5 twelfths, so 100,500 times 5 twelfths is 41,875. And we can't see that. Okay, let's try that. Let's pop that in to our um, 
appropriation account here. So 58,625 and 41,875. Okay, now the next thing we would need to do normally is look for any interest on drawings. There isn't any here, but remember that if you do have interest on drawings, you're charging the partner. So that actually needs to be added to the profit rather than taken away. So there's no interest on drawings. So the next thing we can sort out then um, is the salary. So Tom was getting a salary of 24,600. I'm doing the easy bits first. So this 24,600, remember it's for the year. So seven twelfths of that figure is gonna be 14, three, five zero isn't it five twelfths of that twenty four six hundred is going to be ten two fifty okay so that's going to be a deduction so salary is for tom we can take that away fourteen three fifty and ten two fifty okay next thing we've got to do is sort out the interest on capital okay now this is going to be quite easy for the first um first period of time. So if Sue and Tom for the first period. Now let's have a look. Their balance is brought forward. Sue had um, 45,000 and Tom had 84,000. So 45,000 and 84,000. And the interest that they're getting for the first seven month period is 6%. Okay, so it's times 6%, and then we've got to remember to time apportion it, times 7 over 12. Same for Tom, 6% times 7 over 12. Okay, so for that first period of time, Sue is going to be getting 1, 5, 7, 5, and Tom is going to be getting 2, 9, 4, 0. Okay, so that's those amounts time apportioned. Now, we've got to sort out what happened. And I think probably the easiest way to sort this out with the capital accounts is to um, draw up a capital account. Um, I was going to talk to you about current accounts as well. We'll come back to that in a minute. But if we just look at the capital account and put the, the brought forward figures in. So we know that Sue, it was 45,000 for Sue. So remember, it's capital. So if you're thinking about your dead click, capital is always on the credit side. So the BAL BD. Um, is 45,000 for Sue and 84,000 for Tom and Uzma doesn't have anything brought forward at the moment. Now we've got to do an adjustment for the goodwill so let's, um, or actually let's should we put the money in the bank, let's put the money in. So the bank part is fairly straightforward, um, Sue's paid an extra 25,500 into hers Tom hasn't paid any more money, and Uzma, if we look back at the question, she made a capital investment of 21,000, so she paid that in. Okay, now if you remember as well, we also had to value the goodwill. So if we just have a little look at the calculation here, I'll move, I'll try and move the, the page up this time. So goodwill in the old profit sharing ratio, okay, is 54,000, quite simply divided by two, because they're sharing their part their profits 50 50 so we're going to credit the old two partners so sue and tom are going to get twenty seven thousand pounds each so let's pop that in that's the goodwill created so let's stick that in there so the goodwill created um twenty seven thousand each for sue and for tom nothing for uzma and then we've got the goodwill going forwards so the goodwill in the new profit sharing ratio, it's still 54,000, but this time it's um, Sue gets 35%, Tom gets 40%, and Uzma is going to get, what does she get? 25%. So that adds up to 100, and it's still the 54,000. So if we do 35% of 54,000, for Sue, she is going to get 18,900 charged to her because she's going to be getting 35% of the profits um, and the profits are going to arise because of that goodwill that's been built up. So we'll do the same for the others. Got some dittos here. So Tom, 40% of 54,000 will charge him 21,600. And for Uzma, 25% of that 54,000 means that she's going to get charged 13,500. So let's pop all those into 
So that's the goodwill created. Let's do the goodwill written off. And we'll put those figures in that we've just calculated. So 18,900 for Sue, 21,600 for Tom, and 13,500 for Uzma. Okay, so the only other thing we need to sort out is the BAL CD because we're going to use this after all this quite long winded, but it was worth 14 marks, so you have to expect to, to have to do a little bit of work. So we're going to balance that off. So if we add this side up, hopefully everybody's still in credit. Um, Sue's a balance on her, or the total on this credit side is 97,500. If we take off the 18,900, she has a balance carried down of 78,600. So both sides now add up to 97,500. We do the same with Tom. So if we add up the 84 and the 27, what's that? 111,000. Let's balance him off. So he needs to be, I think I put too many zeros in there. Oh, no, maybe not. Um, 111,000. So his balance, I probably should have written this a little bit larger. I'm um, giving myself a bit more room to work. 89,400 for him. Um, and then Uzma. Pretty easy one there. 21,000 minus the 13 and a half thousand means that she's got the balance carried down of 7,500. So both sides add up. And then let's just extend this down. So if I do the BAL BD, just so it's nice and clear, Sue, halfway or seven months into the year, has now got a balance of 78,600. Tom's got 89,400 and Uzma 7,500. Now we're going to do the interest on their capital. They're going to get 4%. Remember now, 4%, oops, sorry, 4% on there um, for the five months. So these figures we're going to do times 4% and times 5 twelfths in this case. So the interest um, on their capital is going to be so 4% of 78,600 times the 5 twelfths, 1310 for Sue, 1490, so 89,400 times 4% times 5 twelfths, 1490 for Tom and Uzma, 7,500 times 4% restricted to 5 twelfths, she's only going to get 125. So after all that, we can now go back to our. Um, appropriation account and we can add in Uzma. We've done the workings elsewhere so I'm not going to repeat those but we've got Sue was 131310, Tom was 1490, so 1310, 1490 and 125 for Uzma. Nothing there for the, um, the first part of the year. Right, so I think we might be nearly there with our appropriation account. So what we've got to do now is work out the remaining profits. So we've got to um, start with the 58,625 minus the 14,350 um, and then these two amounts for the interest on capital. So that's telling us that we've got a balance of 39,760 for the first seven months. And if we do the same on this side, we're left with 28,700. Okay, and then the share of the profits for the first six months, it's Sue and Tom 50-50. So if we share that between the two of them, they're going to get 19,880 each. And then um, if we bring Uzma into it for the second period, it's going to be um, on the basis of 35, was it 30, 35, 40, and 25% each. So that means that Sue... Um, so the remaining profits, 35%, 40%, and 25% means that. So 28,700 times 35% is going to give us 10,045. Do the same for Tom. He gets 40%. That's going to give him 11,480. And then 7,175 for Uzma. So we're taking that away from the profits, and we should be left with exactly zero for both periods, so all of the profit has been distributed. Now, we're not actually asked to do this in the question, but I thought it would be a useful recap just to remind you of what happens with the um, current accounts. Now, if we look at the, the information here, actually, I don't think we're given 
the information here about the, the current accounts brought forward, but generally they would be um, on the credit side, unless, of course, they're overdrawn. So if their drawings have outstripped their entitlement to profit, then they would have a small overdrawn balance. Now, if we stick in everything from our appropriation account, so um, Tom gets a salary, so we can pop that in there. His salary for the whole year was 24,600, so we can just put that in as a total. Uzma doesn't get anything. Um, interest, the totals for each of the partners. So if we add together the interest um, that Sue's gonna be getting, 1575, plus um, 1310, let's just add that up, uh, 1575, 1310. She's going to get 2885. If we do the same for Tom, so his interest is 2940 plus um, 1490, so 4430 for Tom. And then Uzma is just getting... A little 125 pounds there so not very much for for Uzma so if we then put on the other side the drawings oh actually I've forgotten the share of profit that's the important bit isn't it so the share of profit if we add Sue's getting 19880 plus 10045 so she's getting a total of 29925 Tom gets 19880 plus 11480 so he gets a total of 31 360 and Uzma is entitled to 7175 and then if we pop the drawings because I think we were given those I've got so much paper on my desk now though let's just wave yep, there we go so the drawings um, here down the bottom 26,000, you can see that's a little bit out of focus, 26,000, 35,000 and 10,000. That goes in on the debit side, so part of your your dear clip or your whatever you do, pearls or um, the drawing's always going to be on the debit side. I never really understand how pearls works. One of my colleagues uses it, but uh, I'm more of a, a dead click fan. Um, so that's the drawings. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is that the second part of this question is asking us to decide whether Sue um, and Tom should carry on maintaining separate capital accounts because Uzma's joined and she's already causing trouble. This is one of the issues with partnerships. She's saying that she thinks they shouldn't bother with that. Now, obviously, one advantage of chucking it all in together is there's less bookkeeping. You can throw everything into just the capital accounts. But the beauty of maintaining separate current accounts, and we can kind of see it here, that there's far more on Sue's credit side. She had 2885 in interest and two. 29,925. So well over 30,000 of profits that have been allocated to her. And she's only taken 26,000 in drawings. And that's how it should be. Partners generally, the same as sole traders, should leave a little bit of their profits, um, you know, retained for future growth and development. Um, Tom has done the same. He's got 24,600 in salary and then his share of his profits. So he's got sort of 60 odd thousand there um, and he's only taken 35,000 so he's left a good sum in but Uzma is only entitled here to just over 7,000 in profits she's taken 10,000 so already her current account is overdrawn now the other partners Sue and Tom might think that's a bit unfair because if you remember they're going to be getting interest on their capital account balances um, but she's overdrawn by a couple of thousand here so is it fair that she gets credited when Actually, her current account is overdrawn. So you could argue that by throwing it all in together, Uzma would receive less interest um, as a result. So hopefully that's given you um, a little idea of um, how to tackle partnerships, how to deal with the appropriation. I'll just pop the appropriation account back on there. Um, and if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to my channel and I'll uh, notify you then when I post some more content. Um, thanks for watching.